fourth uh, webinar I've done. The first one was on um, the uh, basic physics of ultrasound and getting uh, uh, understanding the machine. The second one was a, a number of tips on uh, various aspects of ultrasound. And I'll be referring back a little bit to those two. The third one was on liver and gallbladder. And today we're going to be <coughs> uh, focusing on the urinary system. So what, why are we doing the urinary system? Well, it's one of the most important and frequent uses of ultrasound. It's one of the, uh, the main things that people go for when they first start off. And normally most people, I'm thinking of finding the kidneys is uh, quite easy. Um, we look for it um, for chronic renal failure, hydronephrosis, urinary calculi, and bladder masses, uh, TCCs, and the like. And these are the sort of common things that uh, people are looking for. The important thing to remember, though, is ultrasound gives you information about structure. Blood tests give you determine about uh, renal function. And when it comes to actually um, making a diagnosis, sometimes perhaps a renal mass, you need to understand that you need to do your cytology to confirm your diagnosis. So kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra are the, uh, the four subjects that we'll be touching on here today. The structure with the kidneys that you can identify, and I'll try and map them up as we go, the capsule, which is obviously around the outside, the cortex area, the medulla, then the renal crest, or papilla, or um, pyramid, as it's called. Then you've got the renal pelvis, which uh, most of the time in ultrasound you don't actually see, or you don't particularly want to see. Uh, the sinus, which is the hyperechoic hyper fat in, in the middle here. The diverticulum, which we'll discuss later, which is basically the, the sinus breaks up to go into the dorsal and ventral parts of the kidney and then uh, finishes off um, <coughs> these little um, what, spots. Where they, and this is where the arteries and, and the veins come through. The, the renal artery, which um, more often than not divides into a dorsal and ventral branches. In a small proportion of dogs, you can actually get two um, uh, renal arteries. So if you do see that, don't be overly surprised. It doesn't really mean anything. <coughs> then you've got the interlobular arteries, which come up through the diverticular. Then the arcuate uh, arteries that, uh, and veins that go um, between the um, cortex and the medulla. And then the intralobular arteries, which go up through the cortex. These are all end arteries. So if you get an infarct for what, whatever reason, um, you, you can end up uh, just losing a proportion of the kidney. It doesn't, <coughs> it doesn't regenerate. So your left kidney is located in the region of uh, around about L2 to L4, and the right kidney uh, a little bit further forward in the region of L1 to uh, L3. And it's a lot more difficult to visualize and get good images of. Guidelines as to the size in dogs, it varies in different texts, and whatever book you look at, you'll find that it will vary. As a guide, you should correlate with the size of the dog, but there's a huge amount of variation here. On average, your length of a um, dog's kidney can be anything from three to nine centimeters long, its width is four to five centimeters, and its height or depth is three to four centimeters. But like I say, this varies greatly, and there's a lot of crossover. A useful correlation that I've used um, is this uh, relationship between the renal length and the diameter of the aorta, <coughs> where the renal size should be considered reduced if the ratio is less than 5.5 to 1 and increase where it's greater than 9 to 1. But you can see from that that there's a huge variation you know, of, of normal as well. With cats, there's a little bit less variation, and your average length in a cat is somewhere between 3.5 to 4.5 centimeters. So in terms of um, finding the kidneys, if you can't find the left kidney by blind application, which is how a lot of people start, the way you, you probably should learn to do this is by locating the aorta at the external iliac bifurcation, and then you slide cranially and dorsal plane on the body until you locate the left renal artery. Once you've found this, you then follow this, forget the aorta, follow the, uh, the renal artery, and lat cranially and laterally, and the left kidney will come into view because the left kidney is there. So there's just a couple of views that, um, of the, the um, 
<coughs> aorta bifurcation, and then sliding forward here, you come through, and then you find the, the, the renal artery that comes off, and you follow that, and you come up to the kidney. You then slide or fan through the entire kidney width, rotate the probe through 90 degrees, with a marker dorsally to get the transverse view, and you slide through from the uh, cranial to caudal. You then place the probe in sagittal view um, on, the, on the body to the left of midline and locate the kidney and fan through the height of the kidney. So there's some <coughs> diagram diagrammatic representation. Now, I'm not suggesting you do this with a linear probe. It's just that it's easier to demonstrate in, in photos. Um, here's your dorsal view. Head is to the left, tail is towards the right. Dorsal view on the body. That's your sagittal view on the body. That's your transverse view on the body. And you can already see even from the photos of some of the problems you're going to likely have. Because here's your costal arch. And you're right up there with, against it with the transverse. And you're almost starting to point there with the probe like against there. Now, if you're using a microconvex, the chances are, in a lot of cases, you will get that view um, without going over the rib cage. You certainly won't in the right, um, but you may well do in the left. <coughs> Width and height of the kidneys, it's important to obtain good dorsal, sagittal, and transverse views. Now, the problems with this is the dorsal, sagittal, and transverse views on the body do not often correspond to those on the kidneys. The ribs can inhibit a good views of both kidneys, and very slight movements and rotations of the transducer can increase or decrease the perceived dimensions of the kidney. So not only have you got the uh, wide normal variation in size of the kidneys, but it's, a lot of this actually comes down to you and it, you being accurate in uh, examining the kidneys as to getting the, the genuine length and not um, overestimating or underestimating. <coughs> so this is, shows you a little bit about how it can go wrong. So here you have the dorsal view of the kidney. Here's the probe just sitting over the top. And if you get that sitting like that, you will get that view in, in, this, in the screen of the dorsal view. However, imagine that the ribs are up here and this kidney has moved a little bit further forward you're going to start pointing underneath the rib cage with your probe. And I'm sure many of you have seen, when you actually look at the image of the kidney, it doesn't sit like that. It sits like that. And you'll see it on the screen, so you'll see it like that. Now, this is not too bad, except for because of the rules of um, refraction of um, sound, you're going to lose vis visualization of a lot of that, that area there of the cortex, simply because <coughs> this is um, parallel to the beam that's coming out of the probe. Here you will pick up the, um, uh, see the, the capsule here, however it's a lot deeper now than it was there. And th this side, generally speaking, is okay. Now if you have that probe and then you rotate it on the kidney ever so slightly, and I'm demonstrating this from above, it with a linear probe again to show you, you want, to, you want the length of the kidney to be that. A slight bit of rotation is going to foreshorten the kidney quite dramatically because you're going to get it across there rather than across there. Now that means you've got to line that probe up to get the entire length. And that's all that is down to is rotation. In the sagittal view, Here's the, here's the probe sitting in sagittal, and you're moving up and down the height of the kidney this way to get views across like this. Again, a slight bit of rotation, you're going to end up with the length, uh, length of the kidney being quite a lot less than it is in real life. So you're going to underestimate the length of the kidney. In transverse mode, here's the probe um, 90 degrees to what it was in dorsal view. And if you get it down through there, you're going to get a nice uh, realistic um, view of the transverse view of the kidney. However, if you've had to point under the rib cage like this, you can automatically see that you're the, um, the height of the kidney is going to be overestimated because you've, um, you're taking it at this angle rather than that. <coughs> Again, a bit of rotation on the kidney instead of being like this, 